Since CFP Board CEO Kevin Keller assumed his duties in 2007, the number of CFP professionals in the U.S. has grown to 73,000 an increase of over 30%, even while the rigor of the CFP certification has increased. And of course, Kevin has taken the board's 2012 strategic mandate and made the Center for Financial Planning a reality. So to tell us more about the new Center for Financial Planning, let me introduce to you CFP board CEO, Kevin Keller. Thank you very much, buddy. Rich, uh, thank you very much, Rich. And what a great day it is to announce the Center for Financial Planning. We're pleased you could all be here. You know, we're, we're thrilled to have you here for this public launch of the Center for Financial Planning. And we want to share the vision of what we have and what we plan to do with you here today. Uh, again, I, I want to uh, acknowledge TD Ameritrade Institutional for serving as our lead founding sponsor. Uh, Tom Nally, President, TD Institution, will be here shortly to uh, share with us uh, their commitment to the mission. My role this morning is going to be to introduce you to the, uh, what we plan to do, the mission, the purpose, and really talk about the initial priorities and how we intend to move forward with the Center for Financial Planning. But before we do that, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about how we got to this point, because it's, as Rich said, it has been a journey. Our board of directors in 2010 uh, set a five-year strategic direction that uh, it was designed to advance the mission of serving the public that we have at CFP board. The board recognized as we sat in those strategic discussions and have since then that promoting a sustainable, a more diverse, a younger supply of financial planners was central to the mission of CFP board. The board also recognized the unique role that we at CFP board can play in addressing the challenges facing the profession and workforce development. You know, as Rich said, we really do sit at that intersection of 240 colleges and universities uh, that are generating tens of thousands of students coming out of these programs. And we sit at that intersection between the colleges and universities and the firms, large and small, that are providing employment opportunities for uh, new CFP professionals. The Board of Directors back in 2010 directed us at the staff level to explore the feasibility of creating the Center for Financial Planning. We talked to uh, stakeholders, we talked to firms large and small, we talked to the academic community, we talked with our friends in the Financial Planning Coalition about, you know, did they share these concerns, did they see these issues? All you have to do is go to any industry conference and you hear the most popular conference sessions are about succession planning, dealing with workforce development and bringing on the next generation of planners. The results of our feasibility study were that absolutely, yes indeed, people shared the concerns that we have and uh, the, the group by and large shared a willingness to uh, work with us on this initiative. So what we want to do is I want to walk through the initial priorities, tell you a little bit about what we plan to do with the center, and I'll call your attention to the, um, uh, to the PowerPoint presentation. There really are a number of growing problems facing the profession of financial planning. We see uh, a, a demand for a more diverse workforce. Uh, we have uh, in the CFP community, uh, uh, less than 6% of our CFP professionals uh, are represented from the African American, the Asian American, and the Hispanic American communities. I mean, less, the combined, it's less than 6%. Workforce development's our top priority. We have more CFP professionals over the age of 70. I'm sure there are none in the room here today. We have more CFP professionals over 70 than under 30. And so that really speaks to the issue that we have. And then we have a need for the body of knowledge that, that, that will support the continued emergence of the profession of financial planning. And so we need to build that body of knowledge 
and expose the ideas and the practices of financial planning to the academic rigor uh, necessary for the continued emergence of a real profession. You know, we've been answering the call to action. Many of you may know about CFP Board's Women's Initiative, which we launched several years ago and published groundbreaking research. We uh, launched our Career Center in the beginning of 2015 uh, and published the second edition of CFP Board's Financial Planning Competency Handbook, which is, we see as the framework for the uh, body of knowledge and gives us a, a, a way to begin to think about how do we conduct the academic research that supports the profession. So the answer to all of this we see is the Center for Financial Planning and say, stated very simply, the objective is to create a more diverse and more sustainable supply of financial planners and at the same time build the academic home including the body of knowledge that's going to support the profession going forward. We think we're in a unique position to do that at CFP Board in that we can be a unifying platform working with hundreds of firms, working with, as I said, 240 colleges and universities. We want to leverage the collective resources uh, and uh, encourage independent third-party research uh, to move forward. And when we talk about research, I'm not talking about research for research's stake that we're going to sake, that we're going to put on a, on a shelf somewhere. This is research that we think should uh, lead to action and ultimately get results. So our focus is on workforce, diverse, uh, workforce development in three primary areas. Uh, working to increase the diversity of the CFP community, uh, address the next generation pipeline as we uh, help those students uh, in their induction into the profession of financial planning. And as I said, build the academic home for the faculty. We have 140 baccalaureate programs currently at CFP Board. And we have another 45 programs in development. And we have a dire shortage of academically qualified faculty to teach in and lead these programs. That's why we need to create the academic home for financial planning faculty, to give the faculty and aspiring faculty a place to, to congregate, a community, if you will, and a, a, a way to earn the recognition through a journal that will give them access to tenure and promotion to support their careers. We uh, look at uh, having an impact in a number of different areas, uh, gender diversity, uh, some of the initiatives there that we're already working on, as I mentioned, was the Women's Initiative, the WIN Council. The, uh, we're, uh, we'll be moving forward with the faces of women CFP professionals, looking at pilot programs to address both racial and gender diversity, and then uh, putting in place a, a mentorship model focused on women initially, but broader to racial diversity as well. Under racial diversity, we see the opportunity for a racial diversity advisory group because we don't have the answers. We want to bring people together to understand what some of the barriers are to this uh, effort. Uh, we see the importance of uh, uh, racial diversity research that the center will conduct and understand the next generation, uh, 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 how the next generation of diverse financial, prospective financial planners think about the profession, thinking about how an annual diversity summit can play a role there. And again, the next generation understanding how career changers uh, might be attracted to the profession. Uh, again, so those are some of the initiatives that we see the center uh, being engaged in. Under the uh, academic home, I talked a little bit about this, about the importance of having a place for financial planning faculty to uh, publish their research. So we see creating a journal as the real cornerstone of this. And this would be an academic, double-blind, independent uh, journal, academic journal, that qualifies for tenure and promotion for uh, for our financial planning faculty. But there are a number of other initiatives as we continue to penetrate new colleges and universities, an important component of what we're working on here at the center. 
So uh, we, uh, we know that uh, having new students without engaging firms and the uh, hiring folks, the people who are going to hire these new uh, graduates is, uh, uh, is, would be fruitless and that's why we've created the Career Center to build a bridge from the existing uh, educational programs to the firms so that people can get the experience they need to ultimately become certified. The governance of the center is, uh, think of it as uh, a virtual department or a department under CFP board. And so as we've already mentioned and as Rich mentioned, Karen uh, Schaefer and Ray Ferrara are serving as co-chairs of our development committee. Bob Glovsky uh, serving as chair of the advisory council of the, of the center. And think of that as the entity that's providing the programmatic direction for the center. And again, obviously, I report to a, a board of directors, and all of this rolls up to, to our board of directors. So that's where we're headed, and that's how the center will be organized. You know, there are many ways that you can get involved. Uh, beginning this morning, we went live with the new website for the center. It is centerforfinancialplanning.org. Uh, we would encourage you to go there. There will be more information about the center, how you can get involved, video testimonials, and uh, again, that's what, that will be the, uh, the, the location. You'll be able to get there from CFP Board's website uh, uh, in a variety of different ways or go directly there from centerforfinancialplanning.org. Uh, so I think, look, I think the center can be transformational for the profession. I think this, as Rich said, is a key time for the future of financial planning. And uh, we uh, have been working on this for some time. Uh, we think the center can bring together organizations, can bring together firms. These issues are bigger than any one organization or bigger than any one firm can address. And we want to come together and have a collective impact. And we welcome any organization or any firm to join us who feels that this workforce development issue and creating a more diverse work site, a more diverse workforce, is an important objective. We welcome all people to the table. As Rich said, we want to be a convener and a catalyst for change in the financial planning profession. So that's directionally where we're headed. We have some time for Q&A here before we go on. I'm happy to take questions, although the light is shining in my eyes. I'm not sure I'm going to see it. We have some microphones around, and I'm going to take, uh, we had a couple questions that came in beforehand, and if you, uh, while we're doing that, uh, John is here if you want to get the first question. But we had a question come in from Luke Dean. Luke is a faculty member at Utah Valley University, and Luke says, as professors, we need three things. He said, we need access to great data, we need funding. Well, who doesn't need funding? What, you, what, how many faculty, what faculty member doesn't need funding? We need funding and um, a, a nice platform to get our research findings out to the masses uh, or at least to the profession. I'm really hoping the center can help with one, two, or three of all of these things. How are we going to do this, Luke asks. Uh, and uh, uh, this will be a huge boost to the profession. So Luke, let's take those uh, one at a time. I think the data issue is an important one that we need to think about because if you think about investment research, we have over 100 years of the Dow. You can go back and understand what the market did, when it went up, when it went down. Financial planning, we don't have a lot of data, but we have been talking. If you think about it, there, is, there are several big repositories of data. And so we're talking to those firms that uh, have financial planning software data. We think the opportunity is there. We would obviously need it to be aggregated and anonymized, anonymous data, but we think the opportunity for graduate students to take a data set and understand how financial planning is actually being implemented at various levels is a great opportunity. So Luke, I would tell you that uh, we're working on it and we know the importance of data to the uh, role of empirical research. The second is funding. Um, 
there may be studies that we fund. We certainly know that there are firms from time to time that have very specific interests that they, that if, if, assuming they're aligned with what we're trying to accomplish at the Center for Financial Planning, we, uh, we hope to be able to uh, uh, provide opportunities to conduct research and do so with some funding behind it. And then the third, a nice platform to get our research findings out. And as I said, we think the cornerstone of the academic home is a research, an academic research journal that would be independent uh, and, again, account for tenure and promotion among uh, the, the faculty of financial planning programs. John, do we have any questions in the house? Because uh, I have more here, and I'm happy to take those. Any questions? There, while I'm going to do the next question while you're there, we'll, we'll come back to you. I'm going to do one more here that came in. Um, this person, Carter Hall, writes, I'm a 26 and a CFP professional. I'd like to be contacted about how I can be further involved in attracting and cultivating the next generation of planners in our industry. I'm going to refer Carter to our website, centerforfinancialplanning.org. Uh, and there's a way there that you can become involved. So Carter, we'll do that. And John, or what, what's the first question back there, please? I'm a reporter with the Financial Advisor magazine. I wanted to know why is there a shortage of uh, financial planning professors? Uh, why is there a shortage of financial planning professors? You know, quite candidly, financial planning is a new profession. If you think about it, unlike accounting that's been around for 100 years, we, we, we relative, we've only had a PhD program in financial planning, the first being Texas Tech, since 2003, I believe. And so they're only turning out so many. We have added uh, the University of Georgia, Kansas State, uh, Missouri. We have a new program uh, in the business school at uh, LSU, but it's a function of not having uh, 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 CFP board uh, programs and financial uh, PhD programs available. So thank you for that question. John, do we have another question? Hi, uh, Ken Beagle, Turo College. I'm an academic. Uh, simple question is, in order to do research, is the board willing and able to share its database of CFP registrants in order to do survey research? Thank you. We're, we're looking at that. I think, that's a, I think we can do that. It has to be uh, uh, obviously anonymous and we would have to, to do that. But again, empirical research is based on data and without data we understand the shortage and the, the challenge that that includes. So the answer is yes. Are there another question back there, John, or should we go to one that came in earlier? Why don't I go take another one? Uh, Elizabeth Jakes or Jax asks, how do we enlist undergraduate women? I am a mentor for the University of Colorado and most women, uh, and most of the women I mentor have not heard of the CFP and there are no role models. So I mentioned earlier, uh, Elizabeth, CFP Board's Women's Initiative. And we have uh, CFP Board ambassadors, we have a toolkit where folks like yourself can go uh, into the, uh, to, to your university, to your high school, to the places that, uh, uh, your social clubs, and we have, a, you know, and present a presentation about the opportunities. And so I would encourage you to contact the person who leads our women's initiative on our staff, Eleanor Blaney, and uh, she's available uh, through our website. So. Elizabeth, that would be the, uh, the answer to the question there. Any other questions in the house? We have one up here, and then uh, I'll take another one. Um, I was wondering, do you, are, do you have any benchmarks that you're thinking of uh, as far as like oh, through the years, what you're looking to accomplish? Well, look, uh, when we think about the center aspirationally, how will we know we've been successful? I think we, we will know we've been successful 
when there's no longer a shortage of financial advisors. It's a net zero sum game out there. You know, this, this team of advisors leaves this firm and goes over to this firm, and it's, it's kind of people stealing for each other. So we'll know we've been successful when there's no longer a shortage of, of financial advisors. We'll know we've been successful when the advisor population more closely matches the population of the US. We'll know we've been successful when there is a body of knowledge established like the professions of law, accounting, and medicine that really supports uh, the profession. So those are the long-range aspirations that we have for the center, and that's what we're, those are the issues we're trying to address. One more question down front here. I was going to ask, I was going to ask a question, and now I have another question. Oh. Um, it seems to me that in, in my travels um, that you get people that aren't really aware of things until they're much, much older. It's more or less a statement, not a, a question. And with all the things we have, uh, that there shouldn't be too much diversity because then everybody starts falling all over themselves and they don't know what, which way and what and, and I'm sure that that's where the CFP board comes in to make it more specific as to what you need and what we need as CFPs. Now, does that make sense? Not really. There right. was a nugget in there. I'm still looking <laughs> for it. No, look, uh, we, we th I think you're right. The awareness of CFP certification and the value of financial planning is growing. So we work with our coalition partners, not just CFP board, but we're working to grow the awareness of CFP certification. And we're working with our coalition partners to grow the value and awareness of, C of, of financial planning and the difference that it can make in people's lives. I'm going to go, we're going to get one more question because then we're, we're going to be out of time. John, I'm going to go to you in the back. Please. Hi, uh, Timothy Waters. I just had a question. I'm just curious. A uh, couple of years ago, it was that there were 70,000 CFP uh, professionals, and I think only 25,000 of those were actually practitioners. I would just be curious to know what those stats are today and how many people are actually in the financial services sector. So how big is the audience in the sector? 73,000 are CFPs, and how many of those are practitioners? That's what I was curious yeah, about. Well, I, I'm not sure where you got the data, but uh, our surveys, when we survey CFP professionals, upwards of 90% or more of the CFP community have at least some client contact with with, uh, with clients and providing financial planning services. And so that's the number. We, we think of the, uh, of the number of CFP professionals at about 18 to 19 percent of the total market. I'll be quite candid, we don't want 100 percent. That's not where we're trying to get to. If you think about 300,000 uh, advisors providing retail, providing personalized advice to retail clients, we're at about 18 to 19 percent, and we want to, you know, we think that 25, maybe 30 percent is the right number. But uh, again, our efforts and the, the message from our board of directors has been very clear. While we're out trying to grow the profession, we're not going to lower the standards uh, that uh, are in place. In fact, over the years, at least since I've been here, we've raised those standards. So thank you for the question.